Hello, everybody. I'm Barry Johns. I'd like to welcome you back to another edition of Studio Talk. You know, I get asked this question quite a bit, especially when I do something related, whether I'm talking about mic preamps or whether I'm talking about microphones in general, or or whether I'm talking about, you know, the important things that you really want to consider when you're creating your own uh, project studio in your home. Um, and so one of those is, you know, what mic should I buy and do I really need that $3,000 microphone, $3,000 plus? You know, do I really need that or can I do it with less? And, you know, somewhat to some degree, you know, that's somewhat of a difficult question to answer in some, you know, generically per se, because every voice is different. And I think that's one really important point. Um, not every voice, if you're creating your own studio and in, in, in where you either are the singer or you're going to you know, be re primarily recording a consistent singer and not a variety, um, you, know, you really need to get a mic really more tailored towards that particular voice. You know, uh, as an example, my voice when I sing, um, it's, you know, um, it, it's not every mic works with it. You know, I've, I've, I've recorded myself with incredibly expensive and widely popular microphones, and they don't sound as good as some others. And so pairing that microphone with that singer is really important. You know, if you're, if you're female, you know, you may want to navigate towards a certain microphone. If you're male, you want to navigate. If you're male and you have a low voice, you may want to go a certain microphone. Or if you, maybe you, you have a soprano voice or something. And so um, there, there's so many factors to consider that I want you to understand just because it's a famous microphone does not mean that it's going to sound great on the voice you're trying to record. So, you know, this is one area where I think once you get your project studio set up, you know, you've got your recording interface. Obviously, you've got your digital audio workstation. You're set on plugins. You've, you've done some room treatment in your room, and you've gotten yourself a nice set of monitors. You know, the core fundamental aspects of having a, a quality home recording studio you know, the, probably the biggest and most important things to purchase after that are um, the right microphone for you, as well as trying to pair that with an external microphone preamp depending on the microphone. Um, so there's so many factors to, that you have to consider when weighing the differences. This is one area where it really is better, if you can, to go to a store and be able to kind of try out different microphones on the voice you're going to be recording. But I understand and I realize that most of you probably don't have access to a store like that that's really going to have a wide range. Uh, oftentimes, if I'm looking and I'm planning a trip going somewhere, and maybe it'll take me through Nashville uh, or, you know, Chicago or L.A. or New York, somewhere along those lines, you know, I'll probably plan a stop along the way and really have a list of gear that I want to try, whether I'm going to Vintage King's showroom, as an example, in either L.A. or in Nashville, uh, and I believe New York. I'm, I can't remember if they're still in New York or not, but uh, in, 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 in um, uh, Tennessee, in Nashville, you know, they have a great place where you can really check out microphones, or if you can find your way up to, you know, up to Sweetwater's campus up there, that's another great option. So you may want to consider those things for some of these things when you're trying them out. Um, but all that said, you know, there's a lot of people that make a common mistake and that they'll use as an example where someone else used a particular microphone that may be on the budget end of things uh, to record a famous artist, as an example, whether that is, you know, Michael Jackson recording a song with an SMB7. Um, you know, I have one. It happens to be sitting over my son's gaming computer. He, he uses it way more than I do most of the time. But, you know... Um, you know, th that particular microphone, but, you know, they want to say, well, Michael Jackson used it, so it's got to be great for everything. And that's just simply not true. You know, a lot of metal singers, there's a lot of great singers and voices that can benefit from an SMB7. That's a relatively inexpensive microphone, but it is not for everybody, and it's not an all-around well-rounder. If it's the most you can afford, then maybe you want to consider that. But that microphone was, was designed to be a broadcast microphone for use on radio and television where you're recording the recorded voice, spoken voice, not necessarily singing. Or, and then, of course, you've got, you know, the Aventone, uh, their, their, their version of a C12. Um, 
you know, that sells for, you know, around $500 or so. You know, that's another one a lot of people like to navigate to because Twa T Twaler, Taylor Swift used it. Uh, you know, it's kind of known as the Taylor Swift microphone. And for her, I, I doubt she uses it on everything, but she certainly has a history of using it in the past. And it's worked great on her voice. That is actually not a bad microphone for its price. You know, and, and C12s tend to work very well on female voices. Uh, they can work great on acoustic guitar if you're going for a brighter signal. Um, they're great for that. You know, and then you've got, you know, I actually really, really like this one. This is not super expensive, but this is the uh, the warm audio, um, and, and, I, and I really enjoy this a lot. It's a tube microphone, and I think it does a fantastic job at $1,000. But, you know, going beyond that, um, you know, there's, there's so many great choices out there. There's so many fantastic and wonderful microphones, but to truly take advantage of them, they need to be paired with a really great preamp that works well for what you're trying to record, you know, as well as in a great space when, and it doesn't hurt having a great singer. I hope you're one of those. Um, but some of the differences ultimately you're going to find in your lesser expensive microphones, let's just say a large diaphragm condenser, in, your, in, your, in, your, in the lower price range, what you're going to get is those microphones, obviously cost-cutting measures have to come into play to be able to produce them at that price, right? There's a reason more expensive microphones cost what they cost in the manufacturing process. So, um, you know, you're going to tend to get a lot of ambient noise, okay? You're not going to have, you know, so, so you'll hear a lot of the room and the space around it when you may not want that. You know, it doesn't have that target direction uh, that you may be looking for. And so you get a lot of that. You know, the f frequency spectrum, you would probably end up getting a, bu a bump in the low end and a little bit of fuzziness or what I'll call woofiness in the lower mids. Um, and so, you know, those are some things that, that are going to come into play. Uh, and, and you're not going to get the Christmas, the detailed clarity that you would out of a more expensive microphone. Now, again, if that's all you can afford, then by all means, buy that. But oftentimes, you're better benefited by waiting a little bit longer and saving up a little bit if you can, if it's practical for you, and getting a better microphone. Um, you know, when you, when you get into a really great microphone, I'm more talking about the high end, you know, the clarity, the depth, the 3D imaging that comes in, the lack of ambient uh, noise from around the space, you know, uh, you know, is greatly minimized. And that's when you'll truly benefit from pairing that microphone to a great preamp. So that's what you're going to get with that. And then there's a lot in between. There's a lot of really, really perfectly good microphones in the $800 to $1,400 price range. You know, one of the things I strongly recommend is if you've got an idea and you already know what microphone you want, I strongly encourage you to look at the used market and see what's out there. Oftentimes, you can save quite a bit of money by doing that. And so I want to strongly encourage you to do that. Um, but understand that if you take a really great microphone and you're just going into the, imp, you know, the, the XLR inputs on your recording interface, you're not going to get the true magic of that microphone as much that way as you will pairing it with a, like a Neve, Neve preamp or a Neve clone preamp. And again, those things are not all equal either. But, but you know, you get that and then you'll really get that rich vocal that you're looking for. And, you know, you, there are other options as well, but these are things that you need to consider. So when trying to figure out that microphone, again, you want to make sure it's right for the voice you're recording. You know, is it going to get the most? Is it going to capture that in a way that's, that's sonically pleasing to your ears? Okay. Is it going to be able to give you the clarity and the depth you're looking for? You know, a great recorded vocal should just stand out. When you know you got, when you hear that through that great microphone and that great microphone preamp combination, it's going to come alive, especially when you apply some comp light compression, everything uh, on that track, either on the way in or put in post. So you want to, you want to, you want to, you know, that's what you're going to get from it. So you really want to, uh, try to save up and get the one that you can afford um, that's going to make the difference. So it's got to be the right one for your voice. You also want to get one that's going to retain its value. Okay, If you buy a microphone on the lower end, it's not likely to retain much, if any, of its value when you go to sell it in the used market. 
whereas a quality microphone will hold its value for quite some time. You're not going to get 100% out of it, but you're going to get up in the high 80% or greater out of it. So in the event you want to upgrade later on down the road, you can get most of your money back and apply that money towards your next purchase. So make sure you're considering these things and because these things are really important. If you like the things I talk about on this channel, do me a favor, subscribe to the channel. Really appreciate it. Leave some comments down below. Tell me about your experiences with microphones, both good and bad. But until next time, I hope every one of you have a great day. Bye-bye.